the signal. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the information event is for an open e science call for 2024. This is the second or third time we have this call in this shape. And um, with the subtitle Empowering Researchers Through Digitally Enhanced Research. Um, the program uh, will have a presentation from my side uh, describing the uh, the purpose of the call, uh, the admission process, eligibility, and uh, a bit the uh, things to, to pay extra attention for. There's a Q&A session where you can get uh, ask some, some details. We'll have a short break. Uh, later on, there will be somebody from CERF presenting the CERF uh, services and research infrastructure that is available uh, for researchers. Uh, uh, that are interested there, there will be another Q&A and uh, we'll end somewhere around 12.30. Um, so first off, what is the eScience Center? The eScience Center is a research organization um, in the Netherlands um, that is, uh, our purpose is to work on uh, research software. So we're a research institute focused on research software to allow other researchers in the Netherlands to make the most of the available software and hardware and uh, stuff available. Um, so we do this by, uh, we, we've been funded by CERF and NWO uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, and we uh, try to work on this by doing our own calls. Uh, in those calls, which we, uh, we stimulate you to apply digital technologies for research in all research directions. So we're a national center of expertise. Uh, we're independent um, and we employ a, a large number of research software engineers uh, that help us do the do our work. Uh, for the current uh, period, 21-25, we have two ambitions. Um, so we're focusing a large part on uh, funding and stimulating uh, research proposals. And the second ambition is actually our training and community building efforts, which has been uh, more and more important. So this call for proposals is part of the first ambition um, for a research project. So what is the purpose of this call? Um, so this purpose of the call is to, uh, we're looking for projects with a specific research challenge. So we're looking to fund uh, research projects. Uh, so scientific, uh, scientific focus. Um, and we're also looking for projects that have a broader connection to community. So um, projects that really show that they're helping uh, you do your, do your research and research projects, but also uh, we aim to have a larger impact uh, outside of the project with the, with the results coming from the project. Um, so we're looking for projects where there is a strong uh, focus on, uh, on software and techn technological methodological uh, issues. And um, we should, we're looking for projects where we can give the head, we can help the most, uh, make the most of available technology. Um, after, the so after the project is finished and we've written, uh, helped you write new software or improved software, also the software sustainability after the project is uh, is important and we're uh, paying a lot of attention also that the project that we do uh, also have impact after the project then. So we're looking for uh, research projects with a strong uh, uh, software component and uh, impact outside of the project and after the duration of the project are uh, important factors. So what can you apply for? Um, this call for proposals is fully in kind, which makes it a bit different from uh, uh, the more well-known funding opportunities like uh, NWO or Horizon Projects from European Union. Uh, you get 2.3 person year of support from our research uh, software engineers. Um, yeah. So the research software engineers are employed by the eScience Center. They have a, a academic profile for the large part. So they mostly are uh, having a PhD, have experience uh, doing research, but are also at the same time uh, skilled in applying digital technologies and skilled in, uh, in computer programming. Uh, so in your project, you would get support for 2.3 person year for the duration of the project. Uh, the projects are collaborative. Um, so uh, like we said before, we're looking for scientific projects where we're collaborating on the science. 
Um, the engineers will typically join your research team, uh, do the research with you, uh, with their focuses on the uh, on the e science side. Um, but it's really important that these projects are really aimed at a collaboration, and it's not the intention that uh, we're not uh, setting up some sort of uh, outsourced programming uh, thing. But if you're looking for somebody to write your website, it's best to hire a commercial company. But we're really looking at projects where we do the science uh, together in a collaborative fashion. So what does working with the East Science Center uh, entail exactly? Uh, we've made a, a, a page on our website where you can look at example projects and uh, in somewhat more detail uh, how we collaborate. Um, so our RSCs in the project will work on your research question by focusing on the research software that's involved. And um, a second uh, thing that can be applied for, which is included in the scope of proposals, is that each project would have, uh, have to organize a, a workshop that will be funded from this call uh, that is aimed at, uh, at increasing the impact and community building around the software and the, and the work that's being done. So um, what can we do exactly? Um, like I said before, we work on the. Um, yeah. So what I said before, we work on uh, research software. Uh, research software, in in uh, our view, is software that directly uh, contributes to the scientific part. So that directly helps you uh, answering scientific questions uh, or solving your research problems. Um, so there's many types of technology involved. Uh, we split it up in five big categories. This is a sort of dynamic list. Every year stuff comes, uh, is added and stuff uh, sort of uh, becomes so common that it's no longer uh, needed for us to stimulate it. Uh, so in the last years, we had the big data hype. Uh, at the moment, uh, artificial intelligence, deep learning is very in vogue. Um, but the expertise at the moment that we're focusing on that we have available are those five categories. Um, so artificial intelligence, analytics, data processing, computing, and this is all built on the on the foundation of software quality, which is our fifth uh, fifth expertise. Um, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, we have the technologies. Uh, we can do stuff that is not here. Um, at this, so if there's new technologies popping up and it's really important for your research, uh, you can still uh, and we can still work on them, find the expertise to explore. Uh, but this is just to give you a bit of an idea what uh, type of expertise can be asked for in our project. So um, making use of those expertises and softwares uh, often results in uh, in new software uh, or improved software uh, software codes like uh, libraries or tools. Um, and our intention is to make those things widely available also for other research to use. Uh, one big problem with this is that it's always uh, can be difficult to find software. It can be difficult to know what is the quality of the software, and it's uh, difficult to know uh, uh, what's been done already. Uh, so to address this problem, we've uh, started at eScience Center with the research software directory. This is uh, the link is on the bottom. This is a uh, a portal where we showcase uh, our projects and software. And also the software is shown uh, in its in its context, so it helps you to find software uh, related to research. Uh, it's it helps you to find research software, so, uh, so scientific software suitable for your work. Um, but it also it's a portal to get started with software. It shows uh, what papers are written with the software, what papers are written about the software, what is the use case, how to get started, why to use it and gives you some feeling for the software. And it's also a, a, a great way to show your work, but also to see what is available and how to build on all those people. Work. So most of the software that we produce uh, uh, would be of high quality. And we're also going to advertise this in the in the research software. Um, one thing to keep in mind, this is uh, it's really a directory. So it's not meant to be exclusive. So if you have existing code bases, existing tools that are promoted elsewhere, or already have a big online communities, that's fine. That's that's really good. This is just linking to existing uh, existing uh, places. So we're not hosting the code itself. Code would be on GitHub or elsewhere, and it's just a, a portal to find software and to get started. Also, here again, you can have a look um, how we uh, treat the software we write, what type of software we would be writing, and there's plenty of examples to uh, to give you some idea what would be uh, matching the code. 
OK, um, next step, who can apply? Um, there's an exhausted list of uh, terms and conditions in the context. So um, please check with this one or in doubt, uh, send us an email and we can go over it. This is a summary of the terms and conditions. Um, uh, proposals can be submitted by researchers employed by a Dutch research performing organization. So that's typically Dutch universities and NWO and uh, Canada institutes. Uh, it's in one of the appendices which ones exactly are included. Um, for each proposal, we need a lead applicant that submits. And this lead applicant has to have a PhD. Um, the date of the PhD should be before submission of the full proposal, I think. Um, hold the duration for uh, at least for the a contract for the duration of the project. Um, have expertise in applying digital, met digital methods. That doesn't mean that you have to be a super expert, but it does have to show that the type of work that you're uh, suggesting to do uh, is, uh, is feasible in the project. And there's a, a minimal personal commitment to work on the project. This is to uh, of half a day a week. This is for us to really uh, make it possible to collaborate on the, on the work instead of being, uh, 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 so for the work to be successful, for us to really collaborate, we also need some time commitment from the other project partners. Um, some other uh, other conditions uh, that apply. Uh, once again, there's uh, the full conditions are in the context, but one of the uh, things to mention specifically is our focus on open science. Uh, open science is central to the whole e science center um, uh, for multiple reasons: uh, verification, reproducibility, transparency, and all phases of the research process are also for us important. Um, yeah, both for the, to be able to trust the research and to have better research, but also once uh, you've all have got all this in place, it makes it much easier to uh, to build on this research uh, for others to adopt this for re reuse and impact uh, of the work. So we uh, have open science very central to all activities. It means also that our uh, software licenses and data license sets um, are um, are very open. So for software, we by default choose the uh, Apache 2.0 license. So I'm not a lawyer, but this one is basically summarized that anyone can do anything with the code and no warranty. Uh, this is sometimes a bit strict, uh, specifically for existing projects that already are using open licenses that might be incompatible with this one. That doesn't mean you cannot submit, but you be clear about the license and ask us beforehand uh, uh, if this is a problem. Uh, we can often make exceptions for, uh, for specific circumstances. Uh, something similar holds for data. Any data generated in the project, we also want to release on a license as open as possible. Uh, typically, Creative Commons uh, by 2.0 license. Again, a license that means everybody can use the data for anything, any purpose. Again, to, uh, to, to uh, enable more impact and data sharing and make uh, better open science. Also for data, however, there can be many reasons why it's not possible to share uh, privacy, GDPR, uh, existing copyrights, ex existing data sets. Uh, in those cases, exceptions can and will be made for the data set. Also here, it's good to be open from the start about this and discuss what is the, what are the opportunities. Um, so as part of the open science, uh, we put substantial effort in making proper software. So um, uh, that means uh, the code is, uh, is reusable, maintained, uh, documented, usable. At the same time, often it's not always the right thing to write codes to new from scratch. There might be uh, lots of existing efforts around. And uh, in all projects, preference should be given to reusing existing uh, codes wherever possible. That is this to uh, prevent duplication of work. And uh, and if there's already existing communities, by strengthening those communities, by just adding some features to the code, makes also the impact of the project much larger. So uh, really look around what exists, what can we do, what can we reuse before we start writing something new. Um, open access, research data and publications um, are to be freely publicly accessible at the earliest possible stage. Uh, I think this is called gold open access. Um, 
also here in in some cases this might be difficult uh, we can discuss exceptions but this is what we're uh, we're aiming for okay uh final step of this part of the presentation how to apply uh for those of us who've worked with us in the past we had you had to apply via the nwo submission system isaac um this year we've actually changed submission system uh, to a new uh, to a different one. We've chosen Contool, which is very similar uh, in, in functionality. So you have to submit proposals via Contool. The link is here on the site, uh, contool.org slash eScience. And you have to submit a uh, project proposition and the full proposals using the template provided in the call. Um, we are aware this is different from what you might be used to. This is the first time we are using Control. If there's any problems uh, with the thing, with the website, with the submission process, let us know as soon as possible. We'll fix them and make sure that we can uh, manage to keep all that one. Um, finally, I mentioned before that uh, AI, generative AI, is uh, much in the news nowadays. Um, at C-Science Center, we just released our new policy on generative AI. And there's already been a few questions about this. Um, so please, um, if you have questions, ask. At the moment, our stance is as follows. For people writing proposals, um, there's someone in the room. For people writing proposals and making submissions to us, the use of generative AI or any form of AI is fully allowed under some conditions. Um, you have to clearly indicate that you are using AI, uh, generative AI, and how you are using it, but it is allowed. Um, however, the lead applicant stays fully responsible for the proposal. So, um, just like if you write it yourself, if there's a case of plagiarism, biases, factual errors, uh, incorrect or correct references or missing references, um, you can use AI, but you stay with the, the, the final responsibility of the proposal stays with the applicant. Um, in the reverse, um, eSign Center will not use any form of AI in reviewing or grading or analyzing the proposal. So on our side, there will not be any use of it. And for submiss for applicants, um, uh, you stay responsible, but you can do uh, what you think. So if you want to write something with uh, ChatGPT, uh, go ahead and we'll grade it without using uh, any AI. The full policy is available on Zoom. Okay, um, so the submission process is uh, hopefully uh, lightweight in the sense that it's uh, less work for uh, as less work as possible for all uh, applicants. So we've got it in two stages. Uh, the first stage uh, is with a project proposition. Um, the intention is to uh, submit a short uh, description of the work. It doesn't have to be fully detailed or fully fleshed out yet just to give us an impression of what you're proposing. And you'll get feedback on the, uh, it gets, sorry, it, we do a selection round on promising proposals, but we focus on uh, on two criteria. We focus on the research ID itself, which is 30% of the criteria. And we, and we focus on uh, eScience technology and challenge. So is it a match for eScience Center? Is it sufficiently advanced that it warrants our involvement? Uh, and that would be 70% of the uh, of the criteria. So stage one is a project proposition, a template which really explains uh, research ID and technological challenge. So if you look at the templates later on, um, first off, you have to select a research area. And you have to indicate one and only one. And you have to choose the area which best fits uh, the, the work that you typically do. So most of the work would involve uh, software that doesn't make it computer science. So if you uh, if you write software to do something with psychology, please then select the field of psychology. That would be the social sciences and humanities section. So we can make sure it gets uh, judged by experts from the relevant domains and, uh, and the technology will be uh, judged by uh, the technology expert. Then there's a research ID, which is like 250 words, uh, can be quite short. 
um, sketch the problem you have, sketch the, uh, the scientific approach you want to take, to show how it connects to the, uh, the broader community in the impact. Again, it doesn't have to be fully fleshed out, but it has to be a, a sort of a, give a good idea of the work you propose. Then there's the uh, e science technological challenge. Um, so, what is the problem at the moment that you need our expertise with to, uh, to address, and how uh, we're working with to solve this problem? So you don't have to give a full detailed work plan at this stage on what we'll be doing, but really sketch what is the technological barriers and, and uh, some hints of how to approach this. Um, then there's a, a, a checkbox linked with eScience expertise. Uh, again, here you just have to, uh, at this checkbox, you can indicate multiple. And here it's just to, uh, these are the five categories we showed before show which area of expertise you will be needing to do the work. So it's not the expertise that is uh, generally of use in the project, but it's the expertise that is needed, uh, that's requested from the science center to uh, in this uh, project proposal or proposition. Um, end of the form is a, is a table for existing software and data. Um, like I said before, with the open science and software reuse, uh, we prefer if projects start from uh, existing uh, existing data and software uh, software codes. However, if you if you start from uh, a given tool, we have to, to see if it's actually suitable for the for the work. So it's it's perfectly fine to write to it from scratch if no software exists. However, if there's software that's an integral part of the research work. Uh, you should list it here, and we can check if it makes sense to do the proposed work to the posting. Um, so after the uh, project propositions, uh, we'll have a selection round, like I said, based on research ID and each science challenge. Um, the selected proposals, uh, selected applicants will be notified and can do, then submit a full proposal. Uh, the full proposal, um, <coughs> the full proposal again has a as a template. So use of the template is compulsory. Uh, I'll go over a few points of the of the of the templates uh, to give somewhat more detail. Um, so the research team, um, there should be a time commitment from the lead applicant. Uh, we really prefer a lead applicant that is uh, really in charge of the project and is really spending significant amount of time on the project. Um, so we have at least a 0.1 FTE commitment. Um, for the research team, we further need as a condition at least one person from another research institute. This again to have to stimulate collaboration and make sure the, the work uh, finds broader adoption. Uh, the research team expertise and composition and contribution should match the, the proposed project also. That is that we are, uh, bigger teams are not always better. If you have many people that do stuff that is not integral part of the project, it's better to have a smaller team to have the, to have, to have the collaboration clearer. Um, the full proposal then has a project proposal um, and a project plan. Let's see what is to mention here. Uh, yeah, in the full proposal, you also have to submit a software management plan. Uh, a software management plan is a, a sort of, well, a plan how to uh, take care of the software after the project has ended. So what do you do to make it uh, uh, maintainable? Uh, who is doing the main maintenance uh, if necessary? Uh, how do you make it available? Uh, how do you take care of the outcomes of the project? Uh, for this, we also have templates and uh, we can help you uh, fill them out and to discuss and to, to brainstorm how to how this works. Um, so that's, and wherever in the research proposal, uh, you do not have to duplicate anything that's in the software management plan. So please feel free to refer to that if uh, where and if possible. Um, project plan. Um, so that will be judged, uh, used to judge the feasibility of the proposal, which is one of the uh, criteria, one of the four criteria for the full proposal. Uh, so please try to make it uh, feasible. Again, the existing software and data. 
can be updated if needed uh, from the project proposition. Uh, there's a question about digital infrastructure in the full proposal. Um, this is here mostly for the applicants to give it a good thought. But if you want, for instance, if you want to do uh, research on uh, supercomputers or if you want to do uh, research on uh, specific hardware or services, are those services available in the project? And do you still need to request those? And then uh, here to list uh, what is needed and, and how you're thinking of, of, of obtaining those. Um, if you have proper uh, hardware services or whatever at your own institute, uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, commercial is also fine if you want to take those from Amazon or from uh, from Google. Um, however, there's also the opportunity to uh, to contact Surf and Dance for their services. Uh, and Surf will be uh, giving a presentation later on to show what they can offer you. So again, digital infrastructure is not. Uh, this is really to make you think about what you need and how to acquire it. It's in no way a guarantee that we can provide this for you because we don't have, uh, we're independent from certain dance. We cannot give you access to the supercomputer, but it does help you uh, if you need those services to make the whole uh, project proposal more uh, uh, more feasible. In the end of the proposal, there are some statements. Um, uh, it's becoming a longer and longer list. So we uh, have privacy, GDPR, um, uh, Code of Openness for Animal Experiments, uh, our IP rules, mostly focused on open science, the AI policy, uh, and there's some special conditions on the ground team. Um, and we also uh, ask you to inform your institute on the submission so that uh, of, of the proposals that we can assume that actually the head of your institute is agreeing to all the conditions listed here. Um, so the software management plan I mentioned is uh, has to be submitted together with the full proposal. Uh, there's also the option to, su to submit letters of support. Uh, those are optional, but you can still provide them. Um, let's see at the time. I still have roughly 10 minutes, I think. Uh, software management plan. I did a short, I talked about it before a bit. Um, Let's see if I missed anything. So it's aimed at the long-term sustainability of the software. Um, and it's really and that's really focused on making the uh, the work we've done in the project uh, have more impact. Uh, and this is really focusing on the research software that is produced and that is reusable. So it's, it's not the intention for any script, any letter you write to have a full plan. But if we spend three years writing a big library, it makes sense to have a proper management plan for this afterwards. So it's uh, really aimed at the core output of the projects and how to keep this one uh, uh, as vibrant as possible. Okay, um, my apologies for my probably somewhat small fonts. Uh, the slides will be available later on also to have a look. Uh, these are the steps in the procedure. So we're now in the information event. Uh, the next phase will be the project proposition. Uh, after submission, we'll do an eligibility check uh, and do an assessment and selection of the of the proposals. Uh, what I haven't mentioned uh, until now is that we'll have a consultation meeting. So for all the selected proposals uh, that can, uh, for all the selected applicants that submit can submit a full proposal. We'll offer the opportunity to talk uh, to the eSign Center uh, for an hour or a bit more with our technological experts, where we can discuss how to make best use of the eSign Center expertise and the eSign's uh, existing software that is uh, we would recommend. So we can uh, you can pick our brain on how we would uh, uh, best help you with the work you're proposing. Um, after the consultation <laughs> meetings, you have some time for writing. Uh, the full proposal submission is the next step. Again, please use the formats. Uh, they're actually available in open document format, so they should work in any text editor that you would like to use. After their submission, we have a final eligibility check. Uh, there will be an assessment by external committee. Uh, this committee uh, is mostly then focusing on the, uh, the research ID, sustainability, feasibility, and a little bit on the e-science uh, impacts. And they come with a recommendation where finally our board decides about the wider decisions. 
uh, timetable somewhere on the top, uh, February 1st, information event, um, project proposition deadline is 27th of February at uh, 2 o'clock Central European time uh, midday. Um, given that we're using ConfTool uh, for the first time for the submission system, it might be the first time that you are using ConfTool also, uh, try not to submit on the deadline uh, in case there's any uh, errors uh, or, or difficulties. There might be some extra information that you need to provide in ConfTool itself. Uh, of course, in case of technical uh, problems, we can be lenient in the submission, but if you're just late because you didn't make it, that's uh, then the deadline will be strict. Uh, eligibility checks in March, uh, consultation set uh, sessions will be in April and May. Uh, full proposal plus software management plan is for the end of May. Um, and then we hope to have the uh, informa information on the uh, decision in, uh, in November. Okay, this was a long story. Um, if you have any questions, um, there will be uh, plenty of opportunity at the Q&A later on. And you can always, always contact us at opencalls at eScienceCenter.nl and then we'll try to uh, answer them as good as possible. For the eligibility, um, I was standing in for Colette, our program director who was not here at the moment. If I made any mistakes in interpreting the rules, presenting them here, please check them with the call text and send an email to open calls to make doubly sure that uh, that we are uh, not making mistakes. The call text is in any case leading uh, as preference above what I said just now. Okay, um, thanks a lot for your attention. Other, um, I see that we're stopping the recording. Yep.